So, your name is Dan. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Your name's Bill? Oh, my fault. I'm sorry, man. Hey, guys. I'm Matsup. I'm Kai. And today we're back once again taking a look at how to use the brush tool in GIMP. I got a couple comments about this um, uh, a while ago. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, and get this thing cracking. So, this is going to be a super simple thing. We're going to go, go ahead and open up a new canvas, 1920 by 1080. Just, you know, because it's, you know, regular. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with a um, darker color here just so we can, you know, see what's going on. Um, so you can see our brush big night. Nice. So if you go to the brush tool here, the paintbrush tool, it's one of those things over here. You can hit P to enable it by default, I do believe. Yeah. Um, and what I'm going to do is you see the default brushes we have, uh, we have a couple of them. So if you click on this, you won't have some of these ones down here, but these, these four default ones, what I want to talk about. So this, this softest one, the next softest one, the next softest one, or the next hardest one, sorry. And then the hardest one, which is, um, looks like, looks like, um, this. So these are the four brushes. If we go ahead and use them use them all um this one then we have uh this bad boy then we have um this bad boy oh, let me move that back down there um then we have this bad boy which is a little harder and then we have the hardest one which is that there you go so this one's a little smaller just because i didn't make the brush size uh, as 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 big but um so essentially um, I had a couple of comments asking about the, um, the spacing and about the hardness of each of these. So, uh, f if I was going to go ahead and use, uh, the, the softest brush, I would probably use this for gradients. So let's go ahead and let's, let's say I use a darker color here with a new layer. Let's go ahead and put a new layer on top of this. And then I'll just click a couple times. I won't click and drag. I'll click a couple of times and get a nice soft little uh gradient going on so have some shading and i'll drop the opacity down most likely and then we have that nice gradient like that um so that's basically what i would do for that now if i wanted a hard brush for something let's let, let's say i want to make some lines i would do something like uh like this and then i would just make a nice line there you know nice line there line there whatever what i'm whatever i'm trying to do um i would uh, i would use the harder brush for something like that you know um but what i want to talk about really quickly um, is the spacing so these are these this is this is really simple but i think this is very necessary um the spacing over here you can see we have spaceness spaceness hard hardness and force and we have angle and a couple other things but um we'll talk about that in a second spacing it's going to space out each of these so if i click and drag you can see it'll make like you know instead of fully painting like it normally does like this you know it will just go ahead and space them way out. So if I turn this up more, you can see it kind of spaces them out so that it uh, they're not all in the same area. I believe the default for this is, I don't remember, it's five. Okay, so you hit this little yellow button here. It'll turn back to the default value, which is five. So you can go ahead and use that um, just like that, which looks great. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is the aspect ratio and then the angle, obviously. So if I use the aspect ratio, which I use this all the time, um, not all the time, but I use it sometimes. If I, use, if I turn the aspect ratio up, you can see it gets really thin instead of like a circle. You know what I mean? So it's really, really thin. Um, if I turn it back to zero, you can see it's a circle. So essentially what this did is it just squished it down and made the aspect ratio super skinny so that it could be like, you know, a lens flare or whatever, what have you. Now, if you were trying to make a lens flare, I necessarily wouldn't do it like this. I would probably just make a circle and then just scale the layer down. So let's see the difference between turning the aspect ratio up to 20. And then if I was to go ahead and um, use a regular brush and then just uh, hit layer, crop the content, and then just go to the side, the scale tool, and then just squish, hold down, sh hold down uh, control and shift, and then just squish this down. You can see that if I stretch it out like this, I think personally it looks a little bit better because it just, the fall off looks smoother. It just looks, you know, um, it just looks nicer, I think. If I squish this about the same size, about the same thickness, you can see it looks a little, it looks a little, um, a little softer around the, uh, around the edges there. It looks a little smoother than this does. This looks a little harsh. So you can do it either way, either way, but I'm just saying that this is, this is a nice really way to get that kind of effect with the aspect ratio, um, with the aspect ratio tool, um, in the paintbrush section here. So, and then of course the angle would just be changing the angle of this aspect ratio of the brush itself. So you can just go ahead and, you know, maneuver it around if you want different, you know, maybe you want to do like Wolverine claws or something like some kind of scratches, like boom, boom, boom. And there you go. You got some scratches, nice little scratches there. You make them different sizes, you know, make them a little different sizes like that. 
yeah, it looks cool. So this would be really, really, really useful for something like that, obviously. Um, and then the rest of these down here, they don't matter too much, but we will go over them for a second here. So let's go ahead and fill this back in. I'm going to use a different layer, so I don't have to keep doing that. Um, all right, nice. With uh, force, you can see if I go, if I use force here, and I kind of, and I kind of uh, just click once, you can see the difference. If I put it on 100, and then I, if I put it on zero, it's not painting anything. So essentially, what the force is is it's kind of like making it softer. So if I put it on three, it's kind of like it, it essentially it's kind of like opacity turning the opacity down a little bit um but it's kind of just like maybe a lighter touch it's like you know if you're painting on a real canvas instead of pushing down with all your force you're kind of just like lightly touching it if i put it on 100 it's like the hardest you could be pressing down 24 7 all of the time um so yeah that's force and then let's go ahead and do hardness hardness is obviously gonna be the, how hard the brush is so if i turn the uh the brush all the way down to zero and then i turn it all the way up to 100 you can see the difference here now it's super hard, um, which is uh, which is nice. If you don't want to switch brushes here, you don't have to switch back to this hard brush. If you don't want to, you can just use the other brush. And something something uh, kind of cool about the uh, turning the hardness up on a soft brush is that you can see here. If I zoom in, um, the edges of this are slightly a little j more jagged than this over here. Which this this line over here, this was the. Um, this is the soft brush just turning the hardness up, and this is the actual hard brush. So sometimes these these edges can be a little a little a little sharper. And if you don't want that, I would recommend just going ahead and never switching to the hard brush itself, using the soft brush, and then just turning the hardness of the soft brush up because it, it does look a little smoother sometimes in some instances. Um, so I think that's really really easy. You don't have to switch brushes; just leave it on the softest brush you have, and then just turn the hardness up and down depending on what you uh, on what you need. I think that's uh, very very cool stuff. So uh, so yeah, that's just. That is very, very useful. It's very time saving. You don't have to switch brushes every five seconds. You can just, you know, use the this this uh, little setting here. So that is uh, very nice. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the smooth stroke. Now, this isn't exactly a brush, a, a paintbrush um, thing, but it kind of goes off into making things smooth with the paintbrush. So let's go ahead and cover it anyway. So the quality and the weight here, if I put them on 100, you can see what this does essentially is it makes it so that let me let me make the uh, brush hard again. Uh, you can see it, what it does is it makes the brush run a little smoother than if I were to do it like this. Because you can see it looks a little bit more wavy, a little more jagged, and this looks a lot smoother. But what I can do here is oop, if I turn the if I turn the quality up or the which one is it? The weight? I think yeah. The, so the quality the quality is going to make the line not as jagged. Um, the weight is going to make it kind of lag behind a little bit. So if I were to go ahead and use the um, the actual hard brush here and oop, and pull the weight up you can see it kind of lags behind the cursor a little bit that's because it's making that's because it's making the um, the line smooth as we kind of draw which is really cool so essentially uh, this is really useful for if you're using your mouse to draw something because if you have it off you can see that same line is going to be like you know that which is obviously slightly more jagged you see these little these little ridges right here um, and they, they don't we don't we don't really have those there so it just makes everything a little bit more smooth it's it's a little useful um, if you really wanted super smooth lines, I would just go ahead and use the Bezier Curves tool and then hit Fill Path. Oh, not Fill Path, sorry, uh, uh, Stroke Path, and then do that because that makes the line perfectly smooth, obviously, as you can see. But, uh, but yeah, so that is what I would do. That's some paintbrush tips. That's all about the paintbrush here. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.